In the Gun, episode 150, and boy, do we have a treat for you to mark the occasion. Pat and Steve, their old buddy Owen Schmidt, booking two of the uh, most well-known guests in Mountaineer history. We're going to reunite, arguably, the most legendary trio in WVU history here in just a few minutes. Yes, Pat White, Steve Slayton will join us here on In the Gun, your new favorite WVU football podcast. I'm Wesley Euler, as always, with the best teammates in the business. We got the signal caller, Jed Drenning, and some dude who claims to be the runaway beer truck, Owen Schmidt, but I'm not entirely sure because all of a sudden I'm not the only baby face on the show here. Big O chopping off the beard. What's going on, cuz? Buddy, uh, it was time, man. There was a lot of gray showing in there. And uh, the old lady, she uh, she said she wanted a younger man. <laughs> well, You certainly don't strike like me as a color of the beard type, right? Does he, Wes? He, he doesn't strike you as a maybe, color maybe of the beard maybe type, touch, Maybe right? touch a gray. You know, I'll no, tell you. I can't see him. But no, I'll tell you this I, much, Owen. Like you, you could legitimately get carded now. I mean, you took a you took a good fifteen. You took a good you took fifteen a hit, years yeah. off. <laughs> you took a hit. Oh, for sure, man. Uh, everybody at work. So I didn't tell nobody at work, and I worked out with my boss. What was it yesterday? We we go work out at uh, six a.m. at the Y, and I still had the beard. And then I came to work, and he was like, I walked in. He was like, Hey, man, can you take care of something for me? And he's like. Owen? <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude. Yeah, buddy. When yeah, a little hang you know, the issue. The issue is normally I feel like maybe I can shave and look just five or ten years older than Owen when he has the beard. But now, mm-hmm. come on. I, I can't even come close when I, sh- I shave, no matter what I do, right? <laughs> I tell you what, me, me, all good, Jeff. The group. Come on, me, you know? and, me and Owen walk into the fishbowl together. We're getting parted. I'll tell you that for sure. <laughs> Uh, This edition of ITG, we're going to do the thing here. Listen, Pat White, Steve Slayton coming up just around the corner. This is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, and right. I mean, this is the first time the three of you have done something like this, right? Since you've, I mean, since you've graduated, since you've been done, um, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. So Pat and Steve, they got a burning couch and they've, they've done a lot of other stuff together. We've never really done the Holy Triumphant. So uh, this will be, uh, this will be a good time. It certainly will. So we did. You know. we, yeah. We, and we were together one time at the saloon when they, when they both came and we had a, uh, that's awesome. Kind of like okay. a reunion up there. Sure. Um, sure. But never done it, like the three of you have never done a podcast or something like this before together though. Yeah. So no, sir, this will be a, this will be an ITG exclusive big shout out to uh big O for producing or for booking our yeah. guests. You know, he might have an inside track to, uh to these guys, Pat and Steve here, but as we like to do when we have a big time guest on, you know, we've done this when we had Rich Rod, their old head coach on, when we had Charles Wesley Godwin on uh, our buddy, Drew Fabianich, when he was on here, Zach Frazier and Ray Frazier as well too. I'm going to get all the sponsor thank yous out of the way here up front so we make sure we're not missing anything once we get into this. So thanks, as always, to our friends at Bet Online for being a presenting sponsor. We all know Bet Online is where the game starts. You got uh, conference tournaments this weekend, March Madness kicking off next week. Make sure you're, uh, you're going to Bet Online for all of your needs as we roll into a, uh, a fun month here to get a little bit of action. A big shout out to Toothman Ford, as always, and our guy JR. We all know cars cost less in Grafton. They do so much for our WVU student athletes and NIL. So make sure you're supporting those who support us. Our buddies Fortis and Rick Lewis, our guy Jed, if you're watching on YouTube, not only are you seeing babyface Owen Schmidt without the beard, you're also seeing Jed rocking some fresh Fortis swag, baby. Swag is performance. nice. It's real nice. Thank I mean, you. Listen, Thank you, Rick, Rick Lewis. This is comfy. Rick you, Rick, you can text me. I'll give you my address. I mean, you know, I, I, you I, I can people, accept man. deliveries. You got to know people, you know. <laughs> you got to know people. Owen, Owen and I both like jackets, too. I mean, you know, we've got addresses where these things can be delivered as well. Uh, Big thanks to Rick Lewis and to Fortis for root performance and financial certainty. Guaranteed. You got to visit Fortis.us.com. And last but certainly not least, our newest friends of the program, Johnston Equipment. Make sure you're checking out their new location, Route 33, just outside of Weston. Uh, Jed. Before we go to break here, I know you're excited about this one. I know this has your uh, your football, the football nerd in you has been trying 
since last off. I mean, really about the last year, we've yeah. been trying to find the right time to do this. It's finally here. It falls on episode 150 as well, too, which I know appeals to the dork in you. Uh, I know you're fired up for this one, Signal Caller. Episode 150, we certainly wanted to do something special. And I don't know to Mountaineer fans if it can get any more special than the Holy Trinity. You know, uh, my buddy Charlie Fedorko pointed it. He, he, he made a great point. He said, when you look at these three together, what made them so unique? Owen's a throwback. Steve is kind of a player of his time, and Pat was kind of a quarterback of the future. That's so oh, they like all that, offer yeah. different things. It's it's kind of neat to think of it that way, right? And they That's all cool. offer different things, but there's obviously always going to be an appetite in Mountaineer Nation to get these three together. And the fact that they've never actually had an opportunity with busy schedules not lining up to coordinate something, I'm I'm just terribly excited. I know what it's like to get together with old teammates. So I'm excited for Owen. I'm excited, for Pat. I'm excited for Steve. And I'm excited for Mountaineer fans who get to listen in. It's like you, you and I talk with us. I mean, in a perfect world, we might insert a comment here or two or a question here yeah, or there. I'm getting out of the way. I, we just kind of want to stay out of the way and let these guys reminisce, right? I mean, that's yeah. that's the, the 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 ultimate goal here. Now, I have heard from Phil Brady, Jeff Castile, Rashid, Rod Smith, Dusty Rutledge, who all want to kind of chime in with a quick comment that they texted me. But nice, nice. Uh, yeah, let's let's get let's get rolling, Owen. Big go. I say I say let's hit it, man. I'm ready, man. Excited and uh man, it'll be some good uh refreshments of uh the good old days. Well, I think it's safe to say this is an episode probably a hundred and uh, a show 149 episodes in the in the works here. This has uh, probably been inevitable since we started this podcast. What about a year and a half, maybe uh, maybe 19, 20 months ago, whenever we started this thing, this reunion, this trio has uh, probably been inevitable. We made you wait 149 episodes to get it. Now just a commercial break. It'll be Pat White. It'll be Slayton. It'll be Owen Schmidt. And Jed and I will stay out of the way when we return on the other side. You are in the gun. Nobody supports the Blue and Gold Mountaineers like Toothman Ford. With over 20 NIL deals and counting, Toothman Ford continues to rally behind our student athletes. And it's time we rally and support the dealer that supports the Mountaineers. Not only does Toothman Ford offer the best prices in the state on pre-owned, their never over MSRP campaign on new Fords guarantee to save you thousands. thousands. Drive with pride all season long, knowing you're supporting the dealer that fuels our Mountaineers. Toothman Ford, where cars cost less. In Grafton and at ToothmanFord.com. For more West Virginia Mountaineer football content, be sure to follow us on Twitter at In the Gun Podcast. For nearly 20 years, Fortis has been the nation's leader in providing guaranteed roof performance programs for commercial buildings. Fortis offers roof performance solutions that feature extensive initial and ongoing reconditioning for commercial buildings as an alternative to traditional replacement with long-term performance guarantees that are backed by global leader Lloyds of London. Fortis offers a comprehensive range of roof performance management programs that provide financial security, extend the life of our customers' roofs, and make a significant impact on ROI. Fortis is currently improving performance and increasing ROI for customers at more than 4,800 locations, with more than 140 million square feet protected, including many Fortune 500 companies that have turned to Fortis to save money, gain financial certainty, and extend the life of their existing roofs. Fortis has helped customers save more than $520 million in capital roof replacement costs for an average ROI of over 250%. To learn more, visit fortis.us.com. Fortis, roof performance and financial certainty guaranteed. If you work the land, you just got to be a jack of all trades type. There's just too much to do. So if you got to be a welder or a farmer or a ditch digger, that's just who you are that day. And tomorrow, you can be somebody else. Get your coyote at the new location of Johnston Equipment between Weston and Buckhannon. Back in the gun here, and it is time. 149 episodes in the making. One of the uh, most iconic, I think, in my opinion, the most iconic trios in WVU sports history reuniting here. I, 
you know, we've been fortunate to have some really cool guests, and you guys know a lot of times I like to try and do a cool intro for our guests, make them feel appreciated, make them feel welcomed. And I thought about listing off all the accolades and all the accomplishments and something like that. But, guys, I just settled on this. Uh, joining us now in the gun are, are two of the all-time legends who uh, changed the face of WVU football forever, Pat White and Steve Slayton. Gentlemen, thank you guys so much for, uh, for taking the time to do this. Well, no problem at all, man. It's a big O and his show. It's, it's always a pleasure to bring up memories with, uh, with my guys. Definitely appreciate you all having us on today, man. Well, I, I, I tell you what, guys, it's it's been a year in the making. Uh, I, I know, you know, life happens. We're here now. What is up, man? Please, you know, whoever wants to start, you know, 510, you know, what I mean, do your thing. Mm -hmm. Give us give us just a brief run through where you're at right now. Oh, I started off a brief run through. I mean, pretty much just doing the daddy things, taking care of kids in high school and a kid, our daughter in um, was it second grade. So just that just has been fun. You know, the aspect of being able to be there and be able to do those little things is definitely very big. And I uh, appreciate it just from the time away I had before to now just being uh, fully immersed. For me, awesome. I've been navigating my way around the coaching world. Uh, just finished up my second year with the Chargers um, and being a dad like Steve, uh, enjoying those moments. You know, in the coaching world, you don't get too many. So when I do get them, I got to make the most of them. Man, it's it's uh, it's great having you guys on. And, and I got to a little bit behind the scenes with Pat the other day, kind of talk about just, you know, where we are now in life and, and how it's just changed so much. And, uh, you know, kind of a question for Steve and, and, and really the split for Pat, too, because we both had families later than, you know, what you did, Steve. And, you know, what because sometimes I'm like, you know, my son, he does, he's never going to see me play football. Mm -hmm. You know, he never he never saw me on the field. He doesn't really even know, you know, that that was kind of a part of my life you know i'm coaching now and he kind of sees me doing that but he never saw me in the game what what impacts um you know do you think that kind of you know put puts on a kid's life um uh, at you know when you're still young yourself mm -hmm. well it definitely makes you grow up a little faster and just understand responsibilities and understand why you do it you know there's days you don't want to grind but hey you got, you got another mouth to feed and you got somebody to where when it does come to it, you can tell them, hey, what their struggles are and what, what they're going to be, you know, you know, with some, hey, wait, wait till you're ready or just, hey, we've been there. We all know something about that. I think uh, our room, our running back room had, everybody had kids. I think it was only me and Darius that had one. <laughs> There's a plethora of them. Oh, man. No, it's, it's, it's very true. Like, I feel like, in your aspect, just growing up in, you know, in immersing in football, becoming this huge star, you know, and having this family. Um, I, I can only imagine some of the struggles that you went through and, and a lot of the talks where you're like, man, I've been there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Just, just stick with the, stick with the grind, stick with the positiveness. It's all going to come. It's all going to happen for you. And, and Pat kind of like you now, you know, you're growing up, you know, obviously they see you immersed as a coach in football that, you know, and I'm sure they've seen highlights and stuff like that, you know, of, of their dad playing, but you know, where kind of the, now you're at this like maturity stage of your life where you've kind of been there, done that, seen all that run around things. And now you're coming back and now you're growing these little babies up into uh fine young human beings. Oh, um, just... my fault. Go ahead, uh, say for um the navigating so my kids are a little older my kids are what 17 and 15 so it was one of those things to where I let them explore the sports they want to do my oldest he doesn't play any sports but I'm not there to push them to it because you know what I learned and I think with everybody else that's been successful is that you got to want it for yourself first and foremost so my uh young or youngest son 15 year old he's uh playing basketball and, and running track so he actually made the varsity team for track. So I'm just, just telling him, hey, like, you know, after being doing that running track in high school is that 
you got to take care of your body. That's, you know, that's first, first and foremost is to where I know why you're hurting and know why you're aching is because you're not taking care of your body or just even properly feeding yourself because you're going to need that energy all day. So that, that's the, one of those things to where we said they seemed when I was young, well, when they were younger, but just navigating the same way they did it towards like, Hey, I, I've been there. I've been down this stretch already. So I'm just, I'm just trying to give you information that it needs, but it's like, if you want me to help you, you know, you got one or two. Agree. For me, Pat, where you at with that a little bit? Just watching them grow, um, watching them learn how to compete, watching them gain confidence in themselves. That's because they're so young right now. Um, they don't know whether they want to, you know, play basketball, soccer, be a gymnast, baseball, um, who knows. Um, but allowing them to do as many as they can while they can and uh, encouraging them to compete and be a good teammate is most important for me. So that's why where I am with my little ones. Well, I definitely want to say, man, congrats to both of you guys where you're at, you know, now in your in your dad lives. And uh let's let's break let's let's wind the clock back a little bit and uh we'll spit some spit some humble beginnings. Um going back kind of because I, I kind of want you to give a perspective of maybe now with NIL and college college football, what it where it's going now and just what it was like when you guys were, you know, getting the the recruiting calls, the visits, you know, what kind of, you know, special treatments you can say it or not. I don't really care. Uh, or if there was, you know, what I'm saying like whatever was kind of going on for them to kind of schmooze you to make it, you know, worth your while to come to West Virginia. There was no smoothing for me. Uh, Rick Trickett was my, recruiting uh i guess guy uh so he he spit it to me straight he told me pat you're gonna come in red shirt the next year you can compete for the job i tell you this if you do win that job we will have a chance to play for a national championship and we were what five points away from playing for a national championship so um he was almost right on with what he said but for me that's why i chose west virginia because they were honest there were other teams who were recruiting me as an athlete. And then when they found out that I wanted to be a quarterback, it was, well, okay, you can play quarterback, but it was, they weren't being genuine in my opinion. Nothing like Rick Trickett to tell you how it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a uh, Bill Kalavich, so that's two, oh. two great dudes to have. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, piggyback on that, West Virginia was honest. I mean, I think my story has been told a bunch of times of, the whole Maryland thing to where, you know, losing recruitment, trying to find out. Um, but, uh, you know, going to West Virginia, I think um, all the coaches that came in the house were just honest about being able to play. And I got a chance to, you know, play. I got a chance to compete to play. So I think that was you know, the biggest thing to where I think kids nowadays don't want to compete or they don't know how, how to compete because they're not getting initial recognition. So I think it's, it's a very different. And then even with the money too, you know, kids are certain states are starting earlier. Some are starting in high school. So the love of the game, you don't know if it's in it or if it's just for the money and whoever's going to have the bigger paycheck. I don't mind and, that the uh, NIL shook up the system. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it shook up the system a little bit. It's a little bit of a yeah. shock. But, I mean, it's, it's warranted in a lot of areas. Now, they're... I may not agree with the way they went about it. I have my opinion on that, but um, it's cool with me. I wish we had it. I mean, it would have been nice <laughs> to make a little bit of money. Yeah. So, yeah. Owen, Owen, quick question. Quick question. Of the three of you, who would have had the sweetest NIL deal? And then I want all three <laughs> of you to talk about how difficult it might have been to keep that team together if the same challenges existed then that exist now from a roster retention standpoint. Well, you know the quarterback always gets the, the most. He started first pack, getting the yeah. most first. But I think with the team, yeah. we had, I think the team we had, I don't think it would it would have uh, mattered. I, I I think well, the only business decision for me was to to stay again, stay a little longer. That would that would have changed. That would have changed for me if that was uh, capable to happen. You got to remember with me, I turned down 
a decent amount of money to go be a broke college student. So mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> for me, it was about proving to myself that I was capable and I could be the quarterback that I wanted to be. Turned out to be one of the, 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 the greatest of all time. Um, and especially in that era that we were playing and it seemed like everywhere we went, you two were just the most electric thing that was, was going on in college football. There was a lot of good duos and, and you could even say trios at the time, but it just seemed what a perfect storm uh, that kind of culminated there with uh, West Virginia, Rich Rodriguez and, and, and the crew and you guys coming in and, and the players that we had at the time and just the way the circumstances, how it kind of all evolved. It was almost like there was people that were supposed to be the guy, you know, that guy lost his job. This guy didn't want to go to school there and there, you know, guys stepping up, you know, ultimately. And then once it kind of all came to fruition and everybody was on the field, it looked like it was just never, that's the way it was going to be. Um, a lot of good times. Wes, Jade, if you guys got questions as well, please feel free to jump in with these cats. I say with the, our team, I think, or especially just West Virginia, I think we were just a blue collar team. And I think a lot of people that enjoyed watching sports, you know, we weren't the flashiest recruits or all, all, all that you hear about, but it's just like, oh, this team came out of nowhere. Well, let's see next week. Let's see what they do next week. Let's see what the week after that. And to where it just became, this was a consistent thing that we could do and we competed. So, I think people like the underdogs. So this will this will uh, this will transition nicely, actually, from what you just said there, Steve. How people like the underdogs because you're absolutely right. Like there is a there's a charm of being a fan of a team that is consistently underranked, undervalued, underhyped, right? And I think a lot of the most memorable, a lot of the most lovable teams in WVU sports history have certainly you know fit that billing. But there comes a time, too, right, where you kind of go from the underdog to all of a sudden the big dog on the block that everybody wants to knock off. And you guys obviously had that during your time in Morgantown. Um, we we had a couple people tweet us in questions and things like that. And this one from from Jeff, I think, kind of fits this conversation nicely. Um, free Louisville, right? Because that Louisville game, everybody kind of remembers is the the moment where things really took off, the, the coming out party, uh, you know, Pat taking over for Adam, the heroics of Stephen Owen, triple overtime, the comeback win, and all those things. Jeff wants to know, and we all want to know, did you guys feel that you were a sleeping giant before that time? Like, were you guys looking around like, you know, we might really have something here. We just need it all to click. Um, you know, was, was there a feeling before that of, you know, we might have the sauce, we might have something special here, or did you know, or did you need to go out against Louisville and do it to kind of prove that to you? So to start to prove that to yourselves. I was ready to give up that, that money that I was talking about. I was ready to leave college and go swing the stick for that. Um, <laughs> but I, I had a great conversation <laughs> with my father and essentially he gave me some great advice. He told me to show up every day that week like I was the starter. Uh, I did that. Adam got hurt again. And I came in and handed the ball to Steve, and he scored a lot of touchdowns. So <laughs> he made me look good. <laughs> uh, I think we, knew it. we knew that just in practice. I mean, we didn't understand. Well, you could tell the difference between their style of play and what the system was. I mean, you know, you know I don't think Adam beat Pat out at any, any chance or – give an opportunity in practice, but you can tell that's what the result of the game was when all of us were on the field. That's what was produced. And that's what produced the next week, a week after that. But, you know, we could see it in practice is that these are guys that should be playing more or Pat should have been a starter for sure. Yeah. Wes, and, and to answer to that, like, you know, I feel like obviously we knew how much work we were putting in and it was a lot of work. It was harder than anybody was training. I'm sure, you know, prior to coming to West Virginia and putting the time in, um, they were grinding us out. And uh, it seemed, in my opinion, no matter what, didn't matter what, what the game was, what the position was, when you had five and 10 in the game, man, it, anything was possible. And it's, I mean, the film doesn't lie. You go and watch it. It happened game after game, after game, after game. And, and, and to their credit, I mean, the abilities that they showcased on the field, you know, literally took over um and the the momentum in those games 
it just, it never, it always seemed like we were always right here. You know, in games, you'll have a big turnover or, or a, a fumble or something crazy will happen like that. You know, and it seems like it just kind of sucks the soul out of you. I never felt like on our sideline or anything like that, we ever felt like that. It was always, hey, man, there's four quarters. You know, we just got to get to the end of it and uh, we'll see what shakes out here. Last, we have a little bit of breaking news. Uh, I reached out to some uh, personalities from your past, asking for some quick comments, letting them know, hey, the three of them are back together for the first time in years. Coach Rod just texted me. So we're going to get to some <laughs> quick comments here in a few minutes. But, but let me ask you this. It's now been 18 years and counting since the Sugar Bowl in Atlanta. We all watched the game a thousand times. We've all seen the highlight packages. We all have so many memories as fans and observers. What I want to ask you guys, since we have the three of you here together, let's get at least a little granular. Talk about the week or even weeks leading up to that game. Talk about what you remember or don't remember from practice, from a game planning standpoint. We all know how game plans work. When you get a game plan, from a personnel standpoint, Pat, Steve, Owen, you're going to get it. It's going to talk about the defensive personnel. Here are the guys on Georgia's defense that can hurt us. Here are the guys on Georgia's defense that might be able to help us. And we might be able to attack. If you remember any of that, talk about some of that or just what memories you might have from the lead up or even within the game that fans might not know. All three of you are here and you are a reservoir for incredible memories that most fans don't have. So one at a time, have at it, please. Well, for me, it was, I thought we had a good month of bowl camp, what we called it. Um, we were confident. We won a lot of games. Uh, we had had a, success, a lot of success throughout the season. Um, we just knew we had to get by one person. That's all we heard about was a guy named Greg Blue. If yep. we could handle Greg Blue, we could handle the Bulldogs. And I think we did a good job of handling Greg Blue, keeping them all balanced, right? Um, they were playing a little trap, too, um, defense. So I was able to stick the ball in Steve and Owen's belly, pop it up, hit Brandon Miles um, up the sideline. Obviously, Darius had a great game. Um, so I think they were – they didn't know whether to play the run or play the pass. Um, and what we were known for was the run. So um, – we had a great game plan. And, I mean, we did a, a great job of preparing that entire month or whatever it was. Yeah, no, I, I, I'll pick it back off on that. That was yeah, probably one of the best camps we had or just a just mindset of two where, you know, this is you know, the last game of the season. The worst thing that happens is we lose. The, worst, the best thing we could do is compete. So, I felt like, you know, I think there was, what, 84% of the nation thought we were going to lose. So I think we came in there <clears throat> feel more disrespectful, dis or disrespect because, you know, are you SEC, but, you know, we know how to play this game. We, we watch the tapes too. So um, I'll say the story to where uh, Jamal Adai, safety, number four, where he, he had a conversation right before we went out. And he was like, hey, this is your game to let everybody know who you are because everybody's going to be watching. So. That was one of those things, motivation I had for that game. Yeah, and you definitely came out, bud. <laughs> <laughs> no, like okay. like Pat was saying, though, and, you know, obviously all we heard about was, was and I believe he was, what, number nine? Is that what was his number? Blue. 17. Greg Blue, 17. 17. Um, big, big, Super tall numbers. dude. Uh, Super freak athlete. Um I, you know, Kelvin was talking a lot about uh, backers being more like jump around guys. They weren't going to come downhill on us, which, you know, I, I want to say the first, um, first, I don't know, I think it was a draw play. It might've been a zone or a draw play. I can't remember, but uh, hell, I went in there to hit the linebacker and he just jumped around me and Pat or, uh, and Steve just made a move to the outside and, and, and was gone. So it was, they thought they could match the speed with us, but it was, we were so deceptive um, in the backfield that, you know, and then obviously later in the game, I mean, when you're hitting, 
when you're getting throated, you know, by two speedsters the whole game, and then they, you know, eventually they give the big guy some love. I mean, you could have drove a Mack truck through it. You know, I just didn't have the wheels to be able to break <laughs> it all the way. Trying, but I mean, we, we, it was an exceptional game plan. Uh, the preparation was absolutely outstanding. And, and what, you know, it, this stands out to me and it's not even anything uh, football related except for bonding moment. We went down to, um, what was it buckethead in in atlanta is that what it's called the bucket bucket buckhead yeah buckhead and we all went to this bar man and we partied down it was it was awesome but the whole team was there man i mean i got a picture of big oak on like this swing they had in there i mean you gotta remember he was like 300 some plus pounds there's a girl like hanging on to the thing too it's all pg you know i mean everybody had their clothes on and everything it wasn't anything crazy like that but uh, it was just such a cool bonding moment for us. Like everybody down there, it, it it was it was like Steve said earlier. We just had such a really cool team. Everybody got along. We all knew what we were there for, and uh, it was such a special moment. And then it seemed like you know we win that game, and then it was like, you know, we just we just exploded as a team on on the scene. You both they both mentioned something that was important. Uh, we competed that entire camp um big shout out to our defense because they don't get a lot of credit for what they did and how they showed up game in and game out but i mean they were a bunch of dogs that loved the game of football and that entire camp was almost like we were playing for the super bowl which at that time it was the super bowl for us but i mean they showed up and showed out and they were knocking people's heads off well see what that game did and again we we grew up around the program. You guys shattered the glass ceiling of West Virginia football. In other words, we were a program that was always able to approach those games, play for those games, compete for national championships. But we always felt snake bit. We couldn't overcome way back in the 50s, the Sugar Bowl against Georgia Tech and Pepper Rogers. You go up to Major Harris, he gets dinged up against Notre Dame. We ran into a buzzsaw against Florida in the Sugar Bowl. That was the first time on a platform and a stage like that that we stepped up, answered the bell, and beat the 800-pound gorilla in the room. And the way you guys described it, Pat, you talked about the trap cover two they were playing and the way you guys mixed it up. You talked about Greg Blue. Again, let's finish it up with this. I want you guys to try and revisit or remember, when did their body language tell you, oh, no, what are we in for here? Whether it was Greg <laughs> Blue, whether it was the rest of the defense in general, was it that draw play you busted out of the eye to start the game when you blew by him, Steve, in the secondary? I mean, at what point did they realize, wow, we might have bit off more than we can chew here defensively? The body language always gives it away, right? Yeah. I would say that first punch, because I think that was like the fourth play of the drive. I think that was a punch into like, oh, hey, you're not going to have your way. Like, even if that was a fluke or not, but it wasn't, it was that, hey, all right, let's let's tighten up our what do you Rich Ross say tighten up our bootstraps a little bit more, put a little bit more tape on, put a little bit more air in your helmet. Yeah. You know you're in a dog fight at home too. So yeah. I think they came in a little bit overconfident. They were pretty much at home. Here's this team from a state they don't know about, probably never heard of until they heard they were playing us. And I mean, pre-game, they were like, Who are these little munchkins? Right. But again, we hit them in the mouth. We ran by them and we played as one. So they found out real early who they were dealing with. All of the misfit toys, right? <laughs> the island of misfit toys, as Rich used to call you. But each of those <clears throat> each of those four bowl games that you won, Pat. And when I think of the narrative behind it, Steve, when you were along for, you know, th yeah, you won four of them. Uh, five, you count the senior bowl. Right. But uh, there was no, a I'm different we, narrative we, behind each one, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the Gator Bowl had a different narrative. Steve, you're dinged up, and Owen kind of had to help compensate. Uh, you had to carry an even he heavier burden in the run game, Pat. I mean, obviously, we all know the story behind uh, the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, and then you knock off Carolina to finish your career. You guys walk us through the different storylines that existed in the Gator Bowl, falling behind to Megatron, way down in that environment, playing against Oklahoma, the number three team in the country, which – a lot of people felt we're playing the best football in America at the time. So those narratives were much different than sneaking up on Georgia 
in the sugar bowl and trying to do something we'd never done before. Now you were kind of humming. Now you were rolling, uh, seizing on maybe the greatest three-year period in the history of the program. I'll keep it short. Again, Georgia Tech. <laughs> Let me keep it short and sweet because I didn't play Go any ahead. games. So uh, Georgia Tech, I think it was like <laughs> the week before we left, I got injured in practice. We didn't have no pads on and I had a contusion and I was just nursing it, nursing it. And I think we ran a screen and there was a white linebacker that tackled me from behind and I told the coach I can't go no more. So that's when Ed Collins said, well, damn. I was just like, I, I ain't going to be no good. I can't do what I do best. So that game was short. And then was it Fiesta Bowl? Um, I think I was nursing a hamstring. I was running a five-yard flat. Pat threw me the ball, pop, and that was it. So it was short. But what was the risk? Which game, which game was the risk for you? Uh, that would be a gear bowl. That would be the, yeah. the whole season. And we found out yeah. freshman year, or after freshman year was broken. But, no, I think the way we um, definitely trained or even competed, we were, we were always ready for those games. And I say, you know, one of the things that we like to do is take it to the deep end, see if you can swim. Right? It's like four quarters. Can you, can you really keep up for four quarters? And I think that's a testament to the training, my borrowers, the coaches of just, hey, like any game we play, as long as we, like Michael, jo or Michael Jordan say, I never lost any games. I just ran out of time. So <laughs> I think the games we did lose, we did, might, maybe just ran out of time. But yeah, no, as long as we can go four quarters, there's going to be a problem. I love it. Starting with the Gator Bowl versus Georgia Tech, um, we were fortunate because their starting quarterback was ineligible. Uh, so they had to play with a backup, which helped us out a lot. Obviously, that was a close game. Who knows what the score would have been if he was in there. Um, but, I mean, they – in the second half, for some reason, they stopped throwing it up to Calvin Johnson. Um, and that helped us out tremendously. Don't know why. Uh, don't care why. We won. Um, but that was that was a unique win. And I, I was beat up after that game. Um, had a – oh, my hand was as big as a – I don't even – baseball – I got rolled over on my neck. My ankle was messed up, but um, we came out victorious. Shout out to my guy Tito Gonzalez for that that unique touchdown he scored that game uh, on a freeze play. Um, Fiesta freeze? Bowl. Yeah, well, yeah, it was, it's a dummy yeah, count. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was exactly. a, it was a freeze yeah. play dummy count, and they jumped, and I threw it up, and he went and got it. Um, Fiesta Bowl was a unique time for us. We knew we were supposed to be playing for a national championship. Unfortunately, we didn't get that opportunity. Um, we slacked up in a in a rivalry game versus a, a team that probably wasn't as together as us. Obviously, they had talent. Um, didn't play as a team, though, like we did, and we did in that game either. Um, but we were a little hurt that our guy, um, Rich, was leaving us. Um, and we still had something to prove to the world. Um, the guys that stayed there, um, rest in peace, Calvin McGee, great, great game plan. Rest in peace, Bill Stewart, um, great leadership that whole week. Um, and obviously Jeff Castile, I mean, his defense was going to be ready every week. Um, so, I mean, came out victorious. And again, Oklahoma was like, who is this bumpkin team that we're playing against? We showed them. Um, and then North Carolina was just for me, my last opportunity um, to play on a big stage. Uh, unbeknownst to me, I didn't know it was going to be my last opportunity to be a starting quarterback. So for me, it was a great opportunity to end my career. Because um, I don't, even though I had an opportunity in the NFL, I don't consider that much of a career. Um, so it was a, a great opportunity to end on a high note. Um, came out, competed. Uh, I've played against some great talent there, but we wanted it more than they did. You know, you guys mentioned the, the Oklahoma game there. I mean, I think probably the, the two most iconic videos in program history are Majors' touchdown run, the busted play against Penn State, and Bill Stewart's Leave No Doubt speech. Um, just what do you remember about being in the locker room before that, that game against Oklahoma, the mood, the atmosphere, 
uh, the vibe after after Coach Stu delivered that all timer. So we were very fortunate to have some good pregame speeches, but I feel for that one was you know, just special because that was his opportunity. I didn't know if that was going to lead to um, him being able to get the head coaching job, but I think everybody on that team was touched by Coach Stu just from the conversations he had on the field, conversations about, about being a man. But, um, he, he always knew the right thing to say. I think um, speaking back to the Georgia game too as well, I think it was 84% people doubted again. And I think that we've earned the right to not be doubted. So I think that was uh, another level of disrespect the team was taking to to prove the haters wrong. I didn't hear much of the speech. I was thinking about my assignments and alignment. <laughs> um, so it wasn't until <laughs> it was replayed. I, I've listened to it uh, numerous times since then, but I was in the zone, so to speak. Love it. The endorsement on the stage, Pat. Walk us through your thought process when you were standing on that stage during a trophy presentation and you said, hey, this is our guy. I had no idea that uh, the power to be would really listen to me. Um, obviously, he did a great job of leading us that month. Um, and I guess I was speaking from the heart. I was proud of the way we showed up. And at that point, it seemed like he was one of very few coaches who stuck around. I don't know if you re you, all, you all recall this, Stephen Owen, but when Rich Rod gave his speech at Michigan, there was a handful of our coaches sitting in the audience. Um, so Coach Stewart was not one of them. He stayed back. Um, and he kept us together. Again, we had a good month of bowl camp, and we showed up and showed out. Here's another question for you, Pat. On Owen's runaway beer truck touchdown, okay, let's let's walk through this now, all right? Uh, as, you know, Rod's explained this to me in the past. It's kind of a wrinkle off of what we did way back in the Glenville days. You got the pitch action off of it, which will be P, or you have the give to the fullback action off of it, which will be F. This was a 34 or 35 F, I believe, that Owen took and bounced. After watching Owen get run down from behind in the Sugar Bowl, get run down from behind in the Gator Bowl, <laughs> did you think he was going to separate and take that thing to the house, or did you have some doubts? Owen is a lot faster than he gives himself credit for. Um, and Owen did a lot of dirty work prior to – getting the ball handed to him. I think oh, you're 4'7", correct? That's, that's pretty fast for a fullback. So Owen could move. Nobody respected it, but we knew he could move. So there was zero doubt that he was getting in the zone on that one. Again, he did a lot of dirty work. He smashed <laughs> a lot of face masks, I think 13 to be exact. So um, he was a little worn when the ball was handed to him late in the game sometimes. Uh, but we knew he could roll. If he got going, it was scary. This is the last chance, man. This is the last chance. This is the last chance. This is the last time I'm getting this football, man. I got to make this work. I am. You know what's crazy? If you watch that clip, Pat literally is right behind me after I walk in the end zone. Like he is like he's like the second guy to get to me. So I'm like. Cut up to you pretty quick. That dude was 15 yards behind me and made up all the yards. Uh, good times, So we're man. talking to three guys, Wes. These three guys, I did the math, 16,500 plus yards, 173 Ooh. touchdowns between the three of them, okay? So this question's for all three of you as well. You guys have this endless laundry list of plays that you made as Mountaineers. Do you recall a play or two that you reflect on either in the moment or sometime later when you're watching the tape or maybe even today that you look back and you think, how did I do that? Wow. How did I do that? Was there something you did between the lines? I don't care if it was a block. I don't care if you busted a long run. I don't care, Pat, if it was a throw, whatever it might have been. Can you guys think of a moment? I'm kind of putting you on the spot a little bit here, but you made – just a record number of plays. Were there one or two that stand out within your own mind? 
either about yourself or even about each other. For me, um, one that stands out in my mind because I thought I was a tough guy, um, especially UConn. UConn. Growing up in the league that I played in, uh, those blocks were prevalent for my youth teams. Like every place, that's what we were looking for, a crackback. Um, so when I finally got the opportunity, um, I just had to make the most of it. Uh, it hurt a little bit. I saw Owen on the side trying to hype me up after I did it, but um, that was fun. I appreciate you. I appreciate that cutback, Steve. Thank you, my man. Good. Uh, one, or I can't. I feel like you're putting us on the spot. That's it's tough because. I'll say, for me, I will break down Owen the Louisville game when you caught yeah, the screen and he, and came out and came out of it. It was just like what? Because like, oh, they weren't expecting that. For Pat, Over I time. would say, yeah. For Pat, I would say, mm, the Louisville game the third year when D Ray when he was running down there and you know, scored a winning touchdown. That's probably one of those. I mean, there's so many of them. For me. I would have to say a bunch of Maryland ruins because, you know, you can be angry, you can be emotional, but sometimes it don't work in your favor, but just that whole week and just how I felt and finally get a ch chance to punish somebody, that's probably the memorable ones for me. Yeah, I, I'd say collectively the Louisville game will always be one of those games – it was just the way we came back, Pat's play, Steve's play. Pat, I, I believe he came back in that game. And, and uh, you know, what was that, six touchdowns, Steve, that game? I mean, it was just – it was a it was a hellacious comeback. I mean, they, Louisville was a tough team. At the time, that team was – I mean, they had Brian – let's see, uh, Brandon um, – or um, who was the running back? Michael uh, Bush, Brian, Michael Bush. Bush. You know what I mean? Bunch of NFL dudes. Uh, you know, Mario Brian Brown, the quarterback, Eric Douglas. Yep. yep. I mean, they had. Here's the up. They were they were a team, man, and they always battled us real tough. So I, I would have to say that game. It just so much happened in that game for us to even get to those moments and uh at, you know it's crazy i watched it probably six months ago it was on it was airing on tv it was like an espn classic game or whatever and i was watching and i was just like what a what a game dude like what a, what an awesome thing to be a part of um and and just the the memories and the moments and the, and the celebrating uh i feel like in the locker room after that one probably like even any of our bowl games but after that one it when we were counting down and singing the fight song, it was just, it was electric. It was absolutely electric. You were on for something special. I said, Pat, you said he ran a 4-7. Thank you, Owen, for not running 4-6. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, he, he saved me. He gave me another touchdown. So thank you. Yeah. Gave me another one for six. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. He could have run a 4-6. My <laughs> recollection says 4-7. It might have been a 4-6, though. Mm -hmm. We didn't run it the might have been six. <laughs> Once I got moving, dude, it was good. Mm -hmm. uh, Owen, Schmidt's, for your hair. Owen, Owen Schmidt's official combine 40 yard time was 4.73 seconds. Oh, damn. Whoa. That's, not bad at all. That, no, that's pretty good. That's 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 yeah. moving for a big boy, big guy. Well, I, yeah, I think what. I was right, about guys, what was I weighing? About 250? Oh geez, here we go. Hold That's on one second. 240, right 240, 247 you weighed in at the combine. Yeah, I was I was heavy, dog. So who has <laughs> the best coach rod impression? I'm not gonna give me a coach rod memory. I'm not gonna house those. <laughs> uh, uh man, there's so many. Uh yeah. I'm not doing each other all the time. Push on my back and tell me <laughs> a brain. <laughs> yeah, no. it, was, it was definitely funny moments with uh Coach Rod, like just how he, you know, he would talk to different people. Yeah, you can see. He, he, one of my favorite lines is like, you don't got enough money in the bank to be making these decisions. <laughs> so, I yeah. always like the, uh, yeah, I pat you on the ass, you shit right in my hand. It's like, 
That's a classic. That's, like, that's a classic. That's a classic rod one. <laughs> yeah. right, you got one? No, that's that's as far as I'm going. Because it, it's a lot <laughs> easy and hard. You, you know why you do it that way? Because it's easy. You know why you don't do it the right way? Because it's hard. You're soft. <laughs> soft people do it the easy way. Yeah. We've all heard that's, it. That's, We've all heard that's it. That's right. Oh, it's mm -hmm. fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, okay. That, so I had wait, 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 I, Wes. Okay. Go, ask him about last year. You commented on Rich's picture with his dogs, and the word soft came up then. It did. It right? sure did. On it Twitter. Sure did. Can't Pat? be posted. Can't be posted. You can't Commentary? be posted animal. You can't be posted animal pictures on social media. That's soft. All Sorry, right. Wes. Go ahead. <laughs> He's pleading the fifth. He's, He's a smart man. Fifth. I love it. All right. So who? I, who? I say that. Who said that? I Rich. said you're pleading the fifth. You're a smart man. <laughs> you gotta scrub your you gotta scrub your uh, Twitter now. That's yeah. Right. You gotta scrub it. <laughs> Don't have Twitter anymore or X, whatever you call it. Whatever we call it. Um Not well you know ass. what? You know what, gentlemen, I, I did want to make sure to ask this at some point, too. Uh, you know, the, we've got the return of, of of college football, EA Sports, coming back this summer right after a, a, a decade-long hiatus or so. You look over Big O's shoulder there, and he's got his, you know, his cover from, from, from NCAA football. I just got to know, like, any animosity from you two that Big O, out of the three of you, Big O's the one who gets the college football video game cover? Like, really? I mean, have we ever had any animosity about this? Nah, as yeah. well, as well, as well deserved. I think that I think the type of team we are, you know, we're not gonna. I mean, that's karma. They hate on your own brother, but that's you know, right. you deserved right. it. And hey, listen, I'm always happy. But you see the other ones back there too. See some Sports Illustrated. So we've yeah. all been on. Hey, hey Steve, we were asked on the SI cover. How did you end up in the middle and out in the front? You draw straws. What happened there? No, I think that was probably coming off. Uh, the Heisman year. I think, that's where, I, I think that's what it was. It was coming, coming up on for the Heisman year right after. Or, or okay. maybe the start of it. I'm not, not 100% sure. I think it was the start of it. I think that's why. They had to put the shortest one in the middle. <laughs> not the contracts. <laughs> the contracts. What are your guys' thoughts on that being? There's a lot of fans that want to see that recreated with Garrett and CJ and Jaheim. Um, I think that's cool. I think to pay homage because that was that year. It was in different areas. They had different players doing it, so I think that'll be cool. If there's other uh, triple uh, triple threat stars out there, I think that'd be cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So I can't remember. Who it was, I think it was USC. Yeah, um, maybe with uh, Texas, with, it was Michigan. Yeah, it was. I know USC with with Leonard Bush and uh and and uh and White was was one of them. Yeah. Arkansas, yeah. So nothing. Arkansas, yeah. yep, with McFadden and uh, and those Michigan, guys, yeah. yep, yep. Yeah. So yeah. No, I think that's cool. I think that's you know one of those keepsakes for you know the college sports fans of that team of, of those colleges, and yeah, no, I think they should bring bring some of them back. Yeah, it's it's been a blast having you guys here, man, and being able to talk, you know, just reminisce a little bit, talk about kind of what's going on, um. You know, I can't thank you guys enough. I wish. I oh wish wait, Big O, real quick, real quick, real quick. We we can't do this entire episode and not mention. Listen, you two are the holy trinity of of, of WVU football as far as we're concerned. But you might have had a teammate who now is more f famous than the three of you, uh, and he was a kicker. Ironically, <laughs> uh, did you guys did you see this coming with McAfee? I mean, he's always had that personality, right? What was it like being a teammate with him for those years? Oh man, Pat was Pat was a character, or McAfee. I just say he's a character. Don't, don't get it out of context. But uh, no, he he was a good dude. He was a hard worker. I mean, he was lifting as much as the skill positions. So you know that's you know that shows to tell you that you know kickers usually get the days off. But right. even I think Pat had a conversation, or P five had a conversation with about you know how he got his job and how he stepped up. You know, you know that shame mm -hmm. punt against Louisville. So yeah. you yeah. know Pat's charisma, you can see it and you can feel it and. He's making his rounds. He's being honest, and he did it with his his friends. He did it, you know, his way. So, you know, I, I'm very proud of him. Pretty and cool. Even yeah. if he doesn't, I don't want to hear it. But 
no, nah, it's it's something that you see it. You see you see it on TV. You see it on college game day. You see him while he's wrestling. He's always had that charisma. Well, we had something every year at the end of camp called the Gong Show, mm-hmm. um, and Pat was always the host, and Pat always killed it. So, I mean, it was inevitable for him to be where he is today. Um, shout out to Pat Mac. Period. Absolutely. Kind of like what Steve said, man, just the honesty of, of what he's doing. You know I mean? He's such a genuine dude when you talk to him and he's just built those relationships, you know, like he did at West Virginia and just, and just has carried that kind of uniqueness through. And I think that's why he's getting, uh, you know, what, what he, that hard work has paid off, you know? Without a doubt. Well, he'll be on uh he'll be on WrestleMania here in a couple weeks doing his thing. And uh yeah, certainly certainly making everybody proud. Uh Jeff you wanna, Owen, Yeah, I was gonna say I'll take his text. Uh, I was gonna say, like if you got the speak, speak speak now, speak now or hold your peace here as we wrap this thing up. Well, I'm I'm gonna blast through a series of texts from a series of folks. I'll tell you who I, I got to blame Stuart late, but he definitely wanted to get me uh tell you tell you guys, uh give you a shout out, say hey. How you doing? He misses y'all. Uh, Coach Raw just texted me. And it was short and sweet. They made calling plays easy. Only a few headaches along the way. Something tells me there's a lot of truth between the cracks, between those comments there. <laughs> now, here's what's interesting. Old Phil Brady. I texted Phil Brady. Phil Brady came back with a litany of stories. But I'm going to give you the Cliffs notes now, okay? First of all, I didn't realize, Owen, that you and him drove back and forth to Fairfax, Virginia a lot of times commuting. Well, he told me one trip he remembered with Owen, he woke up in Garrett County, Maryland, and they had blizzard-like conditions. It was the middle of the night, and Owen was going like 70 miles an hour through a blizzard. And he's like, dude, are you going to slow down? And Owen's just like, shut the F up, drops a bleep word and starts out with that big laugh that we've all heard and know and love, right? And he says, you want to get home or not? So that's one Owen story. The other Owen story about the time you were having a party and you had his mom, you, you like, dared her into shooting something she she drank something through a shooter and to this day she refers to as your drinking buddy steve (laughs) he told the story with you about early in the season after bar was was putting you guys maybe even the off season putting you through hell with fifths he said that you were wanting the running back group each time out and he made his way over to you of course you're an unknown freshman at the time right he made his way over to you and said hey good job buddy because here he is the senior leader keep it up. You might even make the travel squad. And he said, I was dead serious, Jed. He said, that's what I knew. I was telling Steve Slayton, he might make the travel squad if he keeps it up. And then Pat, what he said to you, he said, he finished playing. Sugar Bowl was his last game. So he said, first of all, you respond every time he reaches out to you. So you haven't changed a bit. But he remembers after the uh, bowl went over Carolina, your final game, there was some sort of post-game celebration party and it was like, you guys were behind the ropes and you saw him across the way and immediately, you know, told the guards, hey, let him through, let him through. And he came in and caught up with you. But he couldn't say enough about you. Of course, Jeff Castile, oh, you know, hard-nosed Jeff Castile. I, I tried to get him to talk some trash, but he just wouldn't do it, right? So he had nothing but positive things to say about you guys, how you treated your teammates, how you treated the staff, how you were humble, how you were hardworking, how there's no surprise what success that the three of you had. Uh and then we had uh, Rod Smith talking about the opportunity to work with you guys in 2007 and what fun that was. He loved all three of you for different reasons. And, and Pat, he said something to me, being a Glenville guy, this matters a lot to me. Chris George was our All-American receiver, my best guy on the team, right? Well, Chris mm-hmm. was known for no matter what the circumstances were, no matter what kind of practice we were having, he was laughing it up. He was poking fun at everybody. He was picking on guys to to make everybody laugh. He said, that was you. He said, that was Pat's personality in practice. It didn't matter. There was no such thing as a bad day. He was going to bring it. Things were going to be positive. Uh, so there's a lot to be said with that. And then, of course, Rashid sh- shot me a text, and he said, I heard the night was a special night, and first and foremost, I'm reading this verbatim. I want to pay homage to all three of you legends, three guys who accomplished something I can confidently say we will probably never see again at WVU. Hats off. To the top dog of all dogs, Pat, the guy that I had the honor of sharing the room with when he was a freshman, the guy that I got to see rip off 40-yard runs with ease during pup scrimmages, 
to the guy that I call my little brother to this very day. I'm proud of everything you've accomplished and will continue to accomplish. Most people applaud you on your athletic achievements, rightfully so. I'm proud of the loving and caring family man that you've become. Love you, little brother. Salute. And finally, I saved Dusty for last. Dusty Rutledge. Mm. I shot him a text and I said, hey, give me a quick comment about these three. And I even shot him the Sports Illustrated cover. I said, the three amigos are reuniting for the first time since their playing career. Give me a quick comment. I want to say something. I'll read it out loud. His quick comment. Where's Darius Raynaud? He was the real athlete in that group. Oh, <laughs> oh, geez. Geez. He was. He was. Hey, <laughs> yeah, he was. He's telling the truth. Yeah. Oh, so there's fantastic. that. Fantastic. <laughs> Mm. Well, Jed, I think that's a good way to wrap it up. Uh, guys, thanks so much again for doing this. I know you both have a million things going on, family things going on. So thank you so much for, for taking the time to do this. Uh, we've really enjoyed it. I know our listeners will really enjoy it. So, so thank you, seriously. No problem, man. Enjoy being on, man. Catching up. It's, a, it's always good to catch up. Hey, and so Jed and O, I just, I just want to say I appreciate you all, man. Thank you all for having us. Steve, appreciate it, man. Hey, and listen. Uh, you guys got an open invite. Anytime that you feel like, you know what, I need to hop on and talk with Wes, Jed, and Big O, the, the door is open. You just let us know. We'll, we'll have you guys anytime. Um, so the last thing, as always, as we close this down, uh, before we say goodbye, the one thing we ask of all of our listeners is to be an ear and tell an ear about your new favorite WVU football podcast for a couple goats, a couple legends, Pat White, Steve Slayton, the runaway beer truck, Owen Schmidt, and the signal caller, Jed Drenning. I am Wesley Euler. Thanks so much for listening. As always, everybody, we'll talk to you next week. You've been in the gun.